You're listening to the Back Porch Talk Podcast. Danny and Jason had many discussions and debates on the back porch while making pivotal investment moves with assets. That's right, with trading cards. They welcome you to the back porch and right into those discussions about current sports news with a fresh and unique twist. So come on and join us. Welcome to the Back Porch Talk Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason. We call us Danny. And fans, we have a fire show for you today, man. This thing is just going to be on point. Listen, we're going to talk about the NFL, whole lot happening, a little bit about the NBA. We're going to go into some HBCU football talk and an interesting topic that we have never done, Formula One racing. Oh, boy. In an interesting special edition trading card scenario. But first, Danny, to the NFL. Interesting games uh, last week and where the Green Bay Packers faced off against the Chicago Bears, one of the most heated rivalries in the NFL, in NFL history possibly. And that happened Sunday night, but Green Bay Packers went ahead and put it on them, especially in the second half. They prevailed 45 to 30. Aaron Rodgers threw four touchdown passes for 341 yards. Justin Fields, nine carries for 74 yards. Uh, Devontae Adams, man, I mean, he's got to be one of the best, if not the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. Ten receptions for 121 yards and two touches. Uh, Quite interesting game. I thought the Bears did pretty well in the first half. They had a pretty decent game plan, uh, and I actually – thought the Packers came out a little lackadaisical, especially coming off of the bye. But nonetheless, again, they went ahead and prevailed 45 to 30. Another interesting game, uh, that Monday night game against uh, the Rams against the uh, Cardinals. Uh, Rams went ahead and prevailed 30 to 23. Matthew Stafford had an interesting game. I think he showed a little something there, Danny. We talked about these Rams. Mm -hmm. It must be something about December where teams really start to really galvanize and really come together and actually uh, do something in December. December is that make or break month. Uh, Kyler Murray, man, I I don't know what happened in this particular game. 383 yards, but two picks. I think anytime you have a divisional game, you can throw the records out the window. Mm -hmm. That game, that divisional game is going to be. Uh, a very tough one. Uh, and I think that's one thing that the Packers realized, especially in that first half and, and the Cardinals realized in the entire game. What say you, Danny? Uh, first off, Kyler Murray back in that Cardinals game, two huge picks. One was in the red zone when they were about to score at the beginning of the game. And one, he just didn't put enough on it. And they picked the Rams picked them off and ran it close so they were in the red zone and ended up scoring. So that was a tough loss for the Cardinals, man. Uh, now they're in the second spot with Green Bay, tied with the Buccaneers with Green Bay in the one, one spot right now. A lot of jockeying like we talked about last week. Speaking of the Buccaneers, great game with Buffalo. That game was terrible from the Buffalo standpoint. It was 24-3. to And then all of a sudden, man, Josh Allen and that crew just went off. And took it took the game to overtime, where Tom Brady found Brashad Perryman, and that was a wrap. <laughs> Ran that one to the locker room, and then be remiss without calling out my Falcons. Big win this week against the Carolina Panthers, six and seven, and the hunt still. And as we look at Week 15, Falcons play the 49ers. 49ers are seven to six. Uh, a couple other games to highlight this week coming up. Tonight, Chargers, Chiefs, big game, Colts, Patriots. Jason, how about you, man? What you thinking for this week coming up? One of the things that I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, is this Packers-Ravens game. Um, Lamar Jackson uh, went out with an injury, but they have not ruled him out of this Ravens-Packers game. 
Um, so I'm going to be really, really intrigued in terms of what is going to happen in that particular game, especially as the Ravens are battling for uh, that divisional crown. Uh, the other game that uh, I'm really intrigued by uh, is going to be this Chiefs Chargers game, man. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, listen, man, Justin Herbert is is real deal, and I really want to see him play against one of the best here i'm looking forward to that game i will have to say this i am interested in that falcons 49ers game <laughs> those teams are battling for that playoff spot man mm -hmm. this is going to be a really intriguing game i i did not see your falcons really being in the in the mix here and they have pleasantly surprised me man i have to admit uh, 49ers as well. 49ers went into Cincinnati and won that game. And so they too are really battling for that last position and so playoff position. And so we'll see what happens. I think that game I will actually be monitoring as well. Some more quick NFL news. Listen, man, Urban Meyer went ahead and got fired. Um, kudos to Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, there have been reports about Urban Meyer actually uh, kicking a player earlier in the season, and I think that was the last straw uh, for Jacksonville Jaguars. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding Urban Meyer, whether it's the people that he's hired, the people that he has uh, brought in to try out for different positions, how he's handled just the team uh, in general, including the coach, coaches and the coaching staff. I think enough was enough, man. And what you've done in college, Urban Meyer, you can't do that to a grown man who's getting paid. Big difference. Jacksonville Jaguars has uh, indicated they no longer need Urban Meyer services and uh, has moved on. What say you, Danny? Jason, the writing was on the wall. He just, it was always something with Urban Meyer. You know, he had the bar incident. And look at the team itself. So he's an offensive mind. And the team struggled offensively. Defensively, they're actually not too bad. If you watch, mm -hmm. they played Tennessee last week, and they're actually in the game because of the defense. They got shut out, but they actually were in the game because the defense is actually halfway decent. The offense is where it's, there's a problem, and they had to make a move quick because you don't want to waste time with Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have the number one pick, and you got to leverage his skill set and Urban Meyer. and not I'm not saying the Jacksonville Jaguars are the most talented team, but they are professionals, and you should be able to get make something out of nothing, especially you know all the money and all the publicity that came with this hiring. Mm -hmm. uh, so they had to cut the core quick, and so you can salvage Trevor Lawrence, give him an off season with a new coach, a new coaching staff, and hopefully turn this thing around in Jacksonville, man. It just wasn't going the right way. It was just too much bad news surrounding Urban Meyer. And maybe, you know, just don't know with him if he just did some certain things on purpose so he could get out of the door, man, because he he saw the writing on the wall himself that it, it was he wasn't cut out for the NFL. And now, Danny, there's just been a whole lot happening in the sports world. Obviously, we're st – Still in this pandemic, and the pandemic has actually impacted uh, several players uh, in multiple sports. I mean, whether it's Baker Mayfield or uh, Giannis or uh, even OBJ, uh, there's been a lot of players across uh, all sports that are now in uh, health and safety protocols uh, for their respective sports. And so, uh, this is just really interesting, man. How how different a, a year has made, especially in the NBA where you've had the bubble um, and there were no signs of uh, a COVID outbreak uh, at that particular uh, moment in time. And, and now there's this. 
I think a lot of it probably stems from, honestly, the holidays. Um, people are congregating with their families and uh, people have gotten a little bit lax. Uh, we're still in this pandemic, y'all. Uh, so be careful. The big thing here is money. And the NBA, the NFL, the NHL, it's, they want to put a product out there. Uh, you have the NBA with Christmas coming up. So they have their Christmas slate, which is huge for them. Mm -hmm. The NFL, they don't have a lot of time to be moving games around and things like that. So they actually just released uh, pro new protocols for the upcoming rest of the season and playoffs. And the NHL, they've moved some games around uh, due to this. So ultimately, it comes down to the dollar, right? And you have to have a product out there for the fans to consume. And so they have to put these protocols in place to protect their product and the players football is in the most urgent state since the playoffs are starting in a few weeks mm -hmm. so they had to react quickly the nba i think will be soon to follow to change some things around and now danny on to the next one here on to the nba and where steph curry my god went ahead and broke the NBA all-time three-point uh, makes. He is the three-point king, if you will, in the NBA. He broke the record in New York early on here in the first quarter uh, against the New York Knicks. And, man, that was this awesome sight to see, man. Mm -hmm. And I think across the nation, people were, were just genuinely happy for him because of – the type of person who he is he's just a good guy from the outside looking in i mean he's this seems to be a really good guy i mean has a beautiful family um but works extremely hard and i think that's what people were really rooting for someone who has worked very hard at his craft mm -hmm. and he doesn't rob the fans of an exciting time on the court. He showcases his talent. He showcases what he has worked on behind the scenes in the gym when there's nobody else in the gym. Mm -hmm. It's probably just him, the basketball in the rim. And he's just working on his craft. And it comes on the court. He comes on the court and he does what he does. So I think people across the nation was just genuinely happy, man. And man, I would have loved to have been in the garden when he broke the record, man, because the, the garden is a, it is a nice arena, man. I can't lie. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to go uh, and everything. Just a beautiful setup, man. But congratulations to Steph Curry uh, and his family um, for really becoming now the three-point king passing by Ray Allen, uh, who was in the building. Same thing with Reggie Miller, who was in third place. Uh, they were all in the building, man. And just what a beautiful moment um, but amongst those three. And it was just something intriguing to really watch. Uh, what say you, Danny? Steph Curry's always been, ever since I seen him at Davidson, he's always been a player that draws you to the TV uh, because he's, he's not a big dude. Mm -mm. He, he's, he's small in stature. And that's what a part of his game because the NBA, you know, is ground and pound, big dudes, and a lot of physical contact. And he's been able, after he got over his ankle injuries initially, mm -hmm. he's been consistent. And he's always out there, like you said. And it's not only his shooting, though. That's the thing about it. It's his handle. Yeah. Nope. It's, his game is all around great. And I think, too, the coaching staff, you got to contribute that to them, too, for letting him mm -hmm. play his game. Because mm -hmm. some games he does, <laughs> he can get a little erratic with some of the passes and things he does, but that's just his game, and they let him play his game, which mm -hmm. ultimately leads to this, where he gets to – man, he's closing in on 3,000 three-pointers in his career. Come on, man. Come on, man. I and was. He's not, he's not done. No, he's, he's not, not, he's not done in his career, man. He's not even close. Knock on wood, man. He he has a lot more time left to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was secretly hoping he would break the record Saturday night when they played Philadelphia because he was playing against his brother. 
Seth. Yeah. Or, I thought that would have been really cool to celebrate with his brother yeah. and his yeah. family uh, in Philadelphia, but he he did it in the Mecca. So Madison Square Garden. So congratulations to Steph Curry on breaking a great record. Um, that's going that one's going to be hard to break. I know they shoot a lot of three pointers now in the NBA, and that's kind of the way of the the way of the basketball world right now, but he shoots it out of a high percentage as well. It's going to be hard to break. And it's something you mentioned earlier about, you know, him being not as big, right? He's but Mm -hmm. Mm 6'3". And I think one of the reasons why the nation was really celebrating stuff is because he's changed the game. Mm Mm-hmm. Danny, I remember going to an AAU basketball game. It was like maybe a couple of years ago. And I I was intrigued because the game has changed for them. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of AAU, mm-hmm. but in terms of looking at the athletes, the students, the kids actually play and them shooting the threes, shooting the jumpers. And there were some that I was, I was like, man, you you gonna have to work on your your shot. You gonna have to you know continue to practice. But there were those in where you could tell that they actually have worked on their shot, mm-hmm. and you can really attribute that to Steph Curry. He has changed the game, and he's changed the game for those who aren't going to be six five, six seven, six nine seven feet tall he's changed the game for those who are going to be six feet six one six two six three or maybe even shorter because they can now handle handle the rock they can Mm -hmm. they can actually shoot and they can when they shoot they can extend the defense which opens things up even more and i think that's the beauty of the golden state offense because they extend the defense on out uh, and when they get clay back, man, that's going to be something to behold. So uh, I, I just had to put that point in there, uh, Danny, because, man, he has changed the game. And now, Danny, on to HBCU football. Look, man, we've talked about this some time ago, and we always say, man, what would happen if a five-star student athlete comes to an HBCU? We said that, Danny, and mm-hmm. uh, lo and behold, it has happened and where Travis Hunter has actually committed to Jackson State University. And let me correct myself. He has flipped to Jackson State University. What an interception by none other than Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and where he has intercepted Travis Hunter from his – Florida State University, yes, Deion Sanders played for Florida State University, for those who don't know. Uh, This is really big news Mm -hmm. for Jackson State University, but for HBCU football and sports. There's just been a lot happening over the past couple of weeks just in HBCU football. Uh, You just have just a lot of student athletes who's been in the transfer protocol, excuse me, the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. And they're now looking at and actually transferring to HBCUs. Danny, this has been a whole lot, man. You have some who are now actually up for uh, national awards. Uh, I I can't leave my Florida A&M University of football team out of the equation here because man Danny I mean you have uh, the likes of Savion Williams uh, declaring for the NFL draft and there's some projections here where uh, he may go into the fifth round and he's actually rising on the draft board and so Danny I mean when you think about just the amount of players I mean I, I have to speak Speak up for my Florida A&M University Rattlers, man. Listen, Isaiah Land, Defensive Player of the Year in the SWAC, Bishop Bonnet, Keenan Forbes, Marcus Bell, Marquise Bell, uh, B.J. Bowler, all first team SWAC, along with Jose Romo Martinez, 
uh, man, all f- first team swag. And man, for Travis Hunter to go to Jackson State, this is a game changer. Mm-hmm. This is a game changer. And I don't think people realize just the magnitude <laughs> this, uh, this is. Danny, we talked about this. We talked about the facilities, the need for HBCUs to improve their facilities. We talked about uh, the stadiums. We talked about um, just um, the, uh, the, food, the training tables. We talked about just a, a wide range of things that HBCUs uh, athletic departments really need mm-hmm. and now with the transfer portal and now with a, a, a five-star athlete student athlete going to an HBCU mm-hmm. the sky's the limit yep. and here's the beauty, beautiful thing about it he's going to get a great education mm-hmm. he's going to be mentored by arguably, can we say arguably, he's Deion Sanders is the best cornerback in NFL history, first ballot Hall of Famer, I mean, Super Bowl champion. He's going to be, Travis Hunter is going to be in a position to win. So this is, this is a win for, yes, Jackson State University, but this is also a win for HBCU football. And I am truly excited for this what say you danny jason this is a trailblazing type move from his perspective from travis's perspective where now other star athletes will see what he's done here see how he performs and how everything goes and it could set the stage for the future it's huge from Dion's standpoint to keep the momentum going like we've talked about in the past Mm-hmm. He he's the focal point. So he's the one. He's he's the face right now, if you mm-hmm. want to call it that. That mm-hmm. if he can keep this going, they I want to, they got to win on Saturday, man. I want them to win to keep that going into the off season, mm-hmm. and then just keep building and building and building. It's gonna take time, uh, but this is the first step from a football standpoint to. So then these schools, these kids may say, all right, I'm definitely going to consider it now. He did it. I can do that. Exactly. And from a revenue standpoint, it helps. Oh, big time. Yep. So big this time. is, it's all, all in all, it's a positive from the, from his standpoint, Travis's standpoint, there's going to be a lot of eyes on him. So I'm hoping that uh, the pressure doesn't get to him. Because he's a star athlete, but mm-hmm. you just don't know, man, with what happened here with him going from Florida State to Jackson State and all that. But that's where Dion is the perfect mentor yep. for these players because mm-hmm. he's been there. He's a marketing genius. Come on, man. <laughs> so it, it all sets up well, man, for Jackson State players in particular, as we're talking here. But in general, because if they can pass that along and you can keep bringing people into the community and mentor these student athletes and prep them for not only NFL, but for life, it's a win, man. And it just comes to the forefront now, not to say they haven't been doing it already, Mm -hmm. but it's now it's on a national stage. And if you keep getting the ESPN games and the bigger games, you got the ABC game coming up on Saturday. It, it, it's just momentum you just got to carry forward. And Dion and now Travis Hunter are the people that they're going to be looking at to say, all right, is this going to really, really work? Or is it not? Or is it just something, a flash in the pan, which I don't think it is. So that's why I'm pulling for this whole situation to be positive and for success transfers that's happened already. I mean, you have uh, transfers, uh, former uh, UCLA quarterback now going over to Grambling state with mm-hmm. Hugh Jackson. Um, you have a quarterback from Vanderbilt going to Florida a and M. I mean, the, the transfer uh, portal is, is something else, man. I mean, you have uh, three-star athletes going 
uh, student athletes going to uh, Howard University. Man, I, I think one of the recruiting pitches, when it comes to HBCUs, man, you could honestly just be yourself. You don't have to worry about uh, certain things uh, if, versus that of you if you were to go to um, a bigger institution, a bigger college. Um, in a lot of cases, man, these HBCUs are like home for um, the student athletes and just for students in general, man. And so that recruiting pitch is fierce. Uh, you know, Danny, one of the things I remember uh, back when A Different World was out, right? And yeah. uh, you know, Dwayne Wade and, and, um, and Whitley and Ron and the crew, right? Mm -hmm. And that was a real motivation for a lot of students mm -hmm. attending HBCUs. There, were a, there was a huge spike in student enrollment at HBCUs back then, I really believe it is really similar to that spike back in the day when a different world came out and where students are really looking at HBCUs more so. And now we're looking at student athletes thinking a little bit differently going to uh, HBCUs. And so, man, we'll see what happens. This is going to be really intriguing to see. And I would say this, Danny, I am looking forward to Florida a and and Jackson State playing again. That's going to be something interesting to watch. We'll see what happens. One of the things that um, I, I love is looking at uh, some new sports. Mm -hmm. I remember listening to uh, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and I was listening to a show in where uh, it was uh, talk radio and it was mentioned about and there was mention about uh, a particular sport, uh, but more so a particular individual. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was uh, a little embarrassed because I did not know anything about this individual man. His name is Sir Lewis Hamilton. When I heard this on a, on the radio, uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton is a part of Formula One racing. And what I did not know was that he was going for his eighth world championship. I was uh, a little bit embarrassed because history was about to be made or could, could have been made had Sir Lewis Hamilton actually won uh, on this past Sunday. The other thing that I did not know was that uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton is a minority. There aren't that many minority individuals in Formula One racing um, as a main driver. Uh, let me correct myself. Sir Lewis Hamilton is the only minority in formula one racing who was going for his eighth championship uh looking to become the all-time leader in that category uh surpassing uh schumacher in this program danny i was listening to i ended up uh, finding out that he was going to race on sunday early morning and so i was like you know what since i didn't know anything about this brother I want to, you know, support and I want to be a witness to possibly some history here. I ended up, uh, I, was, I, didn't, I didn't put a notification or a reminder on my phone. You know, I would just, you know, if I, if I remember, I'll turn, you know, tune in. Yeah. So I ended up remembering, I ended up, you know, tuning in. Uh, and so there are, my understanding, 58 laps. Um, I, I tuned in like maybe at lap 38, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I was actually really intrigued, man. I've never really sat down and watched the uh, Formula One racing um, or anything like that. I remember uh, going to uh, Carb Day Indy 500 um, before and, uh, you know, but Formula One racing seems to be a little bit different, man, because what I loved about it was 
was uh, that all the twists and turns and, you know, the strategies and all that stuff. Right. And I'm like, man, this is, this is kind of dope. And he's in the league. Come on, man. Yeah. And I was rooting for him. I was really into it. Mm-hmm. And then Danny, uh, the controversy started happening. There's a lot of controversy with what we witnessed there. Basically crash happens and safety car comes out. And there are certain rules and regulations that Formula, Formula One actually has. Uh, I'm not going to go into the great detail here, but listen, man, there are certain rules and regulations. And I'll refer you to uh, Article 48.12 and Article 48.13 in Formula One. Uh, and we'll probably, we may put it in, in, the, uh, in our notes here. But there are certain rules in terms of the safety cars, certain rules in terms of allowing uh, some of the cars to pass, things of that nature. Uh, But the controversy is basically how the rule changed in the middle of that last lap. Over time, the rule has stuck. Mm -hmm. And basically, in a sense, Sir Lewis Hamilton should have won this race, man. There should not have to have to have been a last lap race but formula one the referees uh allowed it uh they they wanted a quote unquote a race for the last lap for basically the crown let me tell you how unfair that is when the crash happened the other driver actually went to the pit and got new tires brand new tires so you're gonna have some grip on those tires Mm -hmm. and where versus that of sir lewis hamilton not getting new tires now had he gone into the pit to get tires he would have been overtaken for that that position for his position danny this is uh, a travesty man um some would say game on they were alerted that you know this was happening but you can't change the rules in the middle of the of the race, man. No. Come on, man. That you you changing <laughs> the goalposts, man. I mean, come on, man. Are you kidding me? So you just gonna go ahead and just change in the middle of the race, mm-hmm. and in doing so, you have taken the crown, taken the chip away from Sir Lewis Hamilton. And it was interesting, man, because uh, I'm going to quote something here from Samuel Jackson, Danny. Mm-hmm. Samuel Jackson came out and said this. He says, I know all too well what, it, what's it, what it's like to have to defend yourself in public and sit back and watch your friends and family be silent. I can't do that. We shouldn't let at Lewis Hamilton fight this alone. Life is short. Tomorrow isn't promised. And more time is not guaranteed for any of us. We shouldn't console him with next year. For a full season, we watched Lewis compete with Max for this title fairly and aggressively. Max is an incredible driver. He deserved all his wins this season. But he did not win this championship. Lewis, our brother, was robbed. For 57 and a half laps, he dominated. Sometimes he even led by 16 seconds. And I know that because I watched it, Danny. According to Red Bull's own status cards, Formula One has been on a campaign to bring in a wider and diverse audience, but somehow continues to railroad its only black driver in the sport by making arbitrary last minute rules that consistently contradicts the previous ones. These rule changes seem to specifically affect Lewis the most. Formula One FIA may not do the right thing. And in that case, they they deserve to lose us fans in the process or U.S. fans in the process. While this is entertainment overall and pales in comparison, comparison to many other issues we face, we shouldn't ignore that this man is part of our legacy as a people, 
And this is his life's work he is being robbed of. That is Samuel L. Jackson, Danny. I, I want to really inform the people uh, of Sir Lewis uh, Hamilton here, man. Um, 36-year-old racer, uh, outspoken advocate for human rights. Uh, in 2020, he launched the Hamilton Commission, uh, an organization seeking to improve the representation of Black African, Black Caribbean, Black British, and those with mixed heritage, Black African or Black Caribbean in UK motorsport. Uh, this commission will conduct data analysis, identify stakeholders and engage them, as well as review literature about the sport and connect with potential racers through education and employment. The Hamilton Commission has a specific focus on analyzing youth groups and key stakeholders as well as identifying STEM opportunities in motorsport racing. Come on, man. Again, had he won, he would have broken Michael Schumacher's record. Yep. And I am so glad to have heard uh, about him. <sighs> Formula One, you got you to gotta get this right. I mean, obviously, there were some protests and everything that's happened. Uh, you got to get this right. And I think you may actually have a new fan because in me, I, I honestly look at Sir Lewis Hamilton as uh, someone who can really bring in new viewers like myself, new fans, possibly like myself. Mm -hmm. And you notice, know Danny, listen, I remember when we were first collecting baseball cards, we first started collecting cards, right? Yeah. And we would go to Flatiron Mall in Racine, Wisconsin. At the time, I was like, man, I want to, you know, definitely get some baseball cards, but I'm trying to find someone who looks like me, who I can relate to in baseball. Mm -hmm. That first person for me was Kirby Puckett. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace, Kirby Puckett. Mm -hmm. But then there were some other ones. You had the likes of Ricky Henderson, Tony Gwynn, uh, down, further down the line, Ken Griffey Jr. But Kirby Puckett really drew me in and he became uh, my favorite baseball player. And every time he was on TV playing against the Milwaukee Brewers or whatever, I would watch. Sir Lewis Hamilton is, is that for me for Formula One racing, man. And I would say Formula One racing, if you are watching right now, you need to rectify the situation. You need to make sure that this does not happen again. Yep. I want to learn more about Formula One racing, and I am intrigued in terms of the schedule that is going, going to happen here in 2022. Uh, Danny, Formula One racing is global. This is a global sport. And if Formula One racing is serious about bringing in more of a wider audience, more of a diverse audience, really need to uh, think about how you market Formula One yep. and how you market an all-time great. You're not marketing him right. You may have a fan here. Uh, like, Danny, there's a couple of races. There's a race in Miami. There's a race in Austin, Texas. Listen, man, I wouldn't mind going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't mind yeah. watching you know, uh, for, for number one, if you listening right now, listen, man, I want to learn more about Formula One racing. My boy, Danny, hey, he probably wants to learn a little bit more. Hey, if you got some spare tickets or what have you, listen, we'll be interested. But you got to go ahead and make some stuff right here. You can't do this to an all time great. What say you, Danny? I'm sorry. Truth be told, man, even though all this happened, this controversy now, we're actually introduced to someone we didn't know about. Mm -hmm. So he was knighted this week. Come on, man. Making him Sir Lewis Hamilton. So a lot has been going on with Lewis Hamilton this week, but um, there's not, not much else to add. You showed the clip. And for those of you who are interested, take a look out on the World Wide Web for more information on this. Uh, Mercedes team did file grievances and protests to try to reverse the decision. Um, those are denied. We'll see if anything else happens from this. But 
definitely uh, a big mistake by pulling off what they did during that race in front of everybody too. It wasn't like it was something where come on man, no, they were vocal about it. Come on, man. They had the verbals. Curious to see how this is impacted and how this goes going forward in 2022. But hopefully, Lewis Hamilton gets that. Sir Lewis Hamilton gets that opportunity to get number eight. We have a very interesting trading car scenario, a special trading car scenario. What we got? Since we're coming up on the holidays, we thought we'd just do a special one in tribute to Steph Curry's uh, all time three pointers made record uh, this week. So, what we got tonight is scenario based who would you take? Between Steph Curry, Reggie Miller, and Ray Allen, in particular scenarios. So, Jason, I know you have the scenarios listed. If you want to go one by one and we can say who we're going to take, and then we'll see who the fans would take in these scenarios. We thought about who would you take in the NBA Finals game. When you think about Reggie, Obviously, he went to the final finals one time uh, against the Lakers. Uh, there were a couple of games he didn't show up. There was, you know, a couple of games he did show up. Uh, and he shot very well, actually, in that one game, uh, one of those games. Um, and then when you think about Ray Allen, man, who could forget really Ray Allen saving a legacy of LeBron James? Off of that three-pointer against the San Antonio Spurs when he was with yeah. the Miami Heat. Uh, and then when you think about Steph in the finals, man, uh, Steph is Steph in the finals, man. I mean, you know, he struggled at, at some point um, in everything coming off injury. And this is kind of going back to your previous comment about, man, Steph was only 6'3", slight, slim, to go through a full regular season and playoffs to get to the finals, man. He did get hurt a couple of times in the playoffs um, and then ultimately in the finals when we're – uh, he had to, uh, you know, do the best that he could. <sighs> Danny, we got three of them. I'm going to have to rule one out. Mm -hmm. In the finals, man, I'm going to have to rule out uh, Reggie Miller um, because uh, he's been to the finals once. Um, and I think he could have gone, you know, another time there. But <sighs> that was a tough decision. So it's between, for me, Steph and, and Ray. Because he saved a legacy, I, I might have to go with, I have to go with Ray. What say you? <laughs> this is tough, man. You have three all-time great players. And Reggie, I think he was struck by the Michael Jordan <laughs> era, which held him back, honestly. All in all, I think Reggie... In an NBA Finals game between Steph, Reggie, and Ray, Ray has a couple chips. He got the one with the Celtics. He got the one with the Heat. But he had great supporting cast around him as well. Mm -hmm. And if I'm looking for someone to carry me in a game, in this scenario, I'm going Reggie Miller. <sighs> I think Reggie... In the finals game. In the finals game, I've seen him perform where if I always think back with Reggie in the Knicks game, in the playoffs, it wasn't the championship, of course. It wasn't the finals. I get right. that. And right. when they played the Lakers, he was kind of at the tail end of his career when they did make it um, against Kobe and Shaq. And he did run up against Kobe and Shaq, too. I'm looking at Reggie in that one game. I really want to take Steph, but I'm going to go with Reggie just because I know he has that grit and that grind, and he can go off, off. So I'm going for a finals game. I'm going to go Reggie, even though he has the least, least credential out of all these three. I know it's against the grain here, but I like Reggie's game, man. I like Reggie's game, and I think if he would have had a better opportunity earlier in his career, I think he would have had more hardware or been in the finals more, but you had the tough East and he had to get through that every year. And it was tough, man. Cause he was the, he was the top dog on the Pacers. 
So everyone came at him and he, he brought it, but just that he couldn't get over the hump. That's a, that's a surprise right there, Danny. Now <laughs> on to the next one, man. So a critical game, mm -hmm. you're down to, and you want to win. You don't want to go to overtime. There's some caveats. We'll get into the caveats. Uh, one caveat is uh, a defender in, in your face. Another caveat, any location on the court, off the dribble, last possession of the game. In a critical game, one of the, one of the memories I have of Steph is him against OKC. You remember it was on a uh, – sat. It was I think it was Saturday night game. Yeah, it was on ABC. On oh, ABC, come on, man. <laughs> and they were down. And what did Steph do? They didn't – OKC, for some reason, they decided we're not going to guard Steph. And Steph got the ball. As soon as he got past half court, a step past half court, he shoots, man, and he makes it, man. Come on, man. Another critical game that comes to mind, man, was Reggie against the New York Knicks, man. What did he score, like eight points? Nine points in like a few seconds. Come on, man. We already, I already mentioned about Ray saving their legacy. Mm -hmm. a, in a critical game, let's take the NBA Finals out of it. Mm -hmm. In a critical game, man, I'm gonna have to take I'm gonna take Ray out. And for me, this is going to be between Reggie and Steph. Um, one thing I also remember about Reggie is winning the game against Jordan in the Bulls. Uh, shooting that three and, and, you know, Reggie, you know, jumps up and down and twirl. Come on, man. And what, the other thing that I'm reminded of is Steph against the Houston Rockets. Mm -hmm. And where Steph scored, what, like 30 in the second half? <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Are you kidding me? When you talk about a defender in your face, I'm going to have, man, this is a tough one, man. I'm going to have to go Steph on that. In terms of any location on the court, I mean, I, I was going to pull up some stats here about corner threes, all that stuff. But any from any location on the court, I'm going to have to go Steph. Okay, so you're going any location, Steph. Off the dribble. And one, one, one thing we caveat we didn't put on here was catch and shoot. Yep. Because in catch and shoot, um, I would actually pick uh, Reggie. Off the dribble. It, to me, it's between Ray and um, Steph. And I might have to go um, leaning towards Ray. In last possession of the game, last possession of the game, I'm going to have to go Reggie. Okay. What say you? What say you? Defender in the face, Reggie Miller. Off the dribble, I'm going Steph. Whew. Last possession of the game, I'm going Reggie. Catch and shoot. I'm going Ray Allen mm. and anywhere on the court. That's Steph all day. That's yeah. Steph. His range is, he's not limited. His shot is so fluid. Oh, he shows it today. He can pull up. He pulls up from like two steps inside the half court line and pops it. Mm -hmm. From my standpoint, all great shooters. And we thought this would be an interesting discussion because of what, the, the three of these uh, individuals have contributed to the NBA and how similar their skill sets are from a shooter standpoint and how dangerous they were and still are from Steph's standpoint in the game today. So congratulations to Steph Curry. Kudos to Ray Allen and Reggie Miller from the careers they had in passing the torch on to Steph. Thank you for joining us at Backports Talk Podcast. You can also join us on Twitter by tweeting us at back underscore podcast. For more information, you can go to our website, which is backporchtalkpodcast.com. You can also email us at backporchtalkpodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you for joining us. And remember that there's enough hate in the world. So go ahead and spread a little love.